Okey, kita boleh mula. Uh, selamat datang diucapkan kepada semua penonton yang hadir ke sesi webinar hari ini yang bertajuk Meeting the Challenges of 21st Century Academic Advising. Welcome everyone and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to all the viewers today for participating in this talk organized by Center of Academic Development UPM. Okay, my name is Saira Karudin and I am the Senior Lecturer of School of Business of Economics UKM, UPM. I am very thankful for being invited as a moderator for today's program. This is a very interesting topic and I really hope that it's beneficial to all our viewers today. First of all, I would like to welcome all of you to our event today. Thank you very much for spending your time listening to our talk today. If there is, if there is any question, uh, can you can share your question in the chat box? Okay, I would like to first, uh, I would like you to introduce to our amazing and beloved panel, Prof. Dr. Rosanna Abdul Rahman, who will be sharing about meeting the challenges of 21st century academic advising. Welcome, Prof. We want to sincerely thank you for honoring our inv invitation despite your very busy work schedule. Our goal today is to give the viewers some information on what is expected by the university from us being an academic advisor. I hope that by the end of this session, all of us can come up with some new ideas, uh, a fresh perspective, and a new strategy to meet our responsibilities as an academic advisor. So before the presentation begins, allow me to introduce our presenter. She is a professor of law at the School of Business and Economics University of Putra, Malaysia. She graduated with a bachelor and master degrees in law and obtained her PhD in law from the International University of Malaysia, Islamic University of Malaysia, International Islamic University of Malaysia. She also obtained her professional qualification as an advocate and solicitor of Malaya and a certified professional trainer from the Malaysian Institutes of Management. Her area of interest and specialization are the industrial safety law, employment law, and business law. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Prof. Dr. Rosanna Abdul Rahman. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Waalaikumsalam, Dr. Saira. How are you today? Happy to uh, see you online and happy <laughs> to see all our viewer, viewers here today as well. Uh, Assalamualaikum and uh, salam sejahtera. Thank you to our moderator again, Dr. Sarah Karudin, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this morning. As uh, you have highlighted, uh, Dr. Sarah, I'm sure we are aware of what uh, academic advising refers to. Uh, academic advising basically guides students to make best decisions based on their majors towards completing their degree requirements. Through academic advising, we assist them to clarify their career goals and help them to develop strategies for academic success. As academic advisors, we provide intensive advisor support through regular contact with our advisors. We basically help students to explore their academic interests, identify information, and develop plans of study appropriate for their educational goals. Uh, during these advising sessions, uh, advisors inform students of the academic services offered, introduce the faculty or the school and the academic staff members, and explain about the registration process. Uh, I'm sure that Tessera, we have conducted all these activities with the students since our appointment as academic advisors of the faculty. Yeah, uh, coming on to your question on tasks of academic advisors, yeah, uh, definitely we do have certain duties to carry out. Uh, those I've mentioned were the least of them. However, as we notice, the task or role of the advisor would be greater as more issues knocking down on our advisees. The possible challenges that the students may encounter include, for example, being disorganized themselves, uh, obtaining poor grades or not studying enough, uh, having poor sleeping habits, play games a lot, even finan uh, facing financial issues and having relationship issues with peers and family problems. Either in normal circumstance or in uh, 
acute or critical situation when the students having to face serious problems, either in academic or non-academic matters. In fact, uh, the academic matters like family and social issues would indirectly have its impact on the academic performance of our students. I'm sure you agree with that, Dr. Zaira. Hence, what should we do uh, as an academic advisor? Perhaps relevant to the situation now, yeah, where we have many of our students who were badly affected by the recent flood heat uh, in affected states and in Klang Valley area itself, where the widespread flooding, which started last Sunday, was said to be caused by one in a hundred year heavy rainfall and displaced more than 30,000 people as the country battled its worst flooding in years. We can see from the pictures and on social media how bad the situations are. As of today, the latest announcement by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Academic and International of UPM, I'm sure you're aware, Dr. Sarah, is to postpone lectures and tests to certain dates, uh, giving ways to all students to manage the flood heat uh, affecting them and their families. This is how the University Express is empathy towards all students. At the school level, uh, we are collecting donation uh, as effort to relieve our 50 students who are badly affected by the heat. This is for our school itself. Therefore, if we were to relate the involvement of the academic advisor in this situation, Definitely, there is significant role of the advisor to assist the students in uh, coping with these difficult situations, especially when it comes to emotional distress. It's our duty to get connected and keep in touch with them during this hardship and offer our help so that the students feel our presence. That's I can comment, Dr. Sarah. Okay, Prof. So generally, as an academic advisor, we, I thought we just have to help the student to recognize and achieve their educational goals. But now we are need to go beyond that. <laughs> okay, Prof. Um, there are some reports okay, that noted me and advisor has gone relatively well before the pandemic. Okay, we uh -huh. have so much this time communication with our advisee where we can get to know them better, build stronger relationship between us. However, since now we are facing pandemic issues, students need a higher level of support and guidance. So, Prof, uh, being an academic advisor, what tasks do we hold to manage these issues? What support function should we acknowledge? What is your advice, Prof? Uh, that's a very relevant question. Uh, very much agree with you, Dr. Sarah. Uh, not to say the sudden flat heat. In this 21st century, we are also facing the world pandemic issues. Unfortunately, there were many downfalls yeah, to the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic, if we look at it, has in fact changed education forever. Education has changed dramatically with distinctive rise of e-learning. Uh, where teaching is undertaken remotely and on digital platforms. And the changes the coronavirus have caused might be here to stay. With this sudden shift away from classroom, uh, we may wonder whether the adoption of online learning will continue to persist post-pandemic. Even before COVID-19, there were already high growth and adoption in education technology. Uh, while some believe that the unplanned and rapid, rapid move yeah, to online learning with no training, insufficient bandwidth and little preparation at that time, that will result in a poor user experience and unconducive. Yet, uh, others believe that a new hybrid model of education will emerge with significant benefits. However, the challenges of online learning are prevailing when some students without reliable internet access or technology struggle to participate in digital learning. Significant gap between those from privileged and disadvantaged background can be obvious. And some concerns would be whether the pandemic will widen the digital divide. Uh, but for those who have access to the right technology, there is evidence that learning online can be more effective in a number of ways. 
Uh, this is uh, mostly due to the students being able to learn faster online compared to a traditional classroom setting because students can learn at their own pace, going back and rereading, skipping or accelerating through concepts as they choose. Therefore, all these challenges of online learning would definitely become the subject matter of an academic advising. Not to forget, an academic advisor should be the main referral for the students to be guided on any latest information from the university updates. At this juncture, virtual academic advising would have its benefits in terms of flexible appointment scheduling, uh, safe time traveling, and uh, increased access to advisors. Yet, virtual advising posts its own challenges like international students with different time zones. I guess that's one of the issues. And uh, regardless of the potential issue, yeah, an academic advisor must be proactive and willing to offer dynamic kind of assistance to guide the students to the problem solving. In this situation, definitely the academic advisors themselves must get full support function from the school or the faculty. I'm sure the faculty has provided all the necessary supports, either in terms of manpower, services, and monetary assistance. That's my response to Saira for this. Okay, Prof. Okay, next question. In your point of view, do you think it's burdensome to play the role as an academic advisor? <laughs> Do you feel so? I think it should. Mm. Now, yeah, I don't think Sarah, if uh, someone asks us, yeah, uh, is academic advising burdensome? Do you feel mm. stressful, exhausted, emotionally affected for having to absorb difficulties of your students? Uh, personally, how do you respond to this question? In principle, who do you think must be the mover to establish the connection between the students and the academic advisor? I think you should start with the students. Uh, they need to come to us because we have many students under us. We have, as an academic advisor, we have our certain student. Even as a lecturer, we have our master and PhD student who are doing research that we need to observe. So shouldn't they be the one who start the conversation with us? Well, quite agree with that. But knowing students, if they are not uh, having close tie and trust on you, yeah, on having to reveal their problems or secrets, most probably they will not find the advisor and willing to share, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They will look for the advisor only during the new semester registration period, for example. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, in principle, I guess the advisors must be the mover to let the students know where to find the advisors. Uh, where the advisors would provide the platform where they can be reached by the students. The rapport, the bond, and the trust between the advisor and the advisee must be there to me. Uh, and uh, how to handle the stressful and burdensome issues, that is why the importance of the appointment, appointment of the head of academic advisors yeah, by the faculty uh, is to manage the group of advisors in the school or in the faculty and becomes the coordinator to hear any issues faced by the advisors themselves in coping with the student's problem. Yeah, uh, this is the support that we need to have uh, from the faculty, even from the university. Okay, Dr. Sarah? Okay, uh, keep Start answering the burdensome so we issue. Need, uh, we need to, yeah, we <laughs> need to actually be in a team, yeah, yeah. Can you see that the ways of how to handling our emotions, uh, how to be, uh, how to be able to respond yeah, to the issues of the students, we also need need to be in our group of advisors, and this is headed by one head of advisors appointed by the team of the school. That's how, uh, that's how it goes. Yes, Dr. Sarah, <laughs> is the line having problem? All right. So, noted, Prof. So, definitely we need to be more compassionate, more flexible, and more open to our advisees. Then we should become more like a team with them when they face difficulty in both academic and non-academic issues, right? 
Yeah, because we are also handling okay, their problems. Problem. Yeah, we are also handling their problems. And uh, the problems may include academic and non-academic matters as well. Therefore, we also need to be referring to some authentic resource, I mean, sources yeah, in order for us to give the correct advice to all our advisees. That's what I reckon. Okay. Yeah, in fact, we have rules on this. Yeah. Um, are you aware about the rules, uh, Dr. Sarah? Is the line having problem? Into this academic advising. Dr. Sarah, I lost you. Yeah, I lost you a bit. Uh, it's about okay since you said there's there are certain rules okay uh so should we go to further to find some rules about academic advising system in our university okay, do we have I, any didn't, rules? I didn't hear you before there's uh, some lagging uh on oh, guys, Never mind. Guys. okay you're uh, asking about the rules okay. right you're asking about rules? the rules yes uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I will be sharing with all of you here yeah, on our, our uh, uh, University Putra Malaysia. So any guidelines for us to be... Right. Uh, I'm referring to this one important document that we have in our university. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure whether you are aware of the existence of this part, but I'm sure you uh, uh, acknowledge the existence of this part in the rules itself. Uh, this is the UPM Academic Matters for Undergraduates Rules 2014. Yeah, if we look at uh, these rules, uh, in Part D yeah, of the rules contain uh, the academic advisory system, yeah, where we can show you some of the yeah, important parts of the rules, uh, starting from Rule 28. Rule 28 of the Academic rules says uh, who should establish the system and definitely the university uh, shall establish the academic advisory system, of course, in accordance with the provisions in this rule. And uh, how do we uh, implement yeah, this uh, advisory system? According to Rule 29, yeah, we, the faculty itself, the faculty itself shall provide certain spaces in the faculty uh, as a place to carry out the academic advisory activities. Uh, this is to me more towards the physical, yeah, physical spaces. Yeah? I mean, uh, catering, uh, of course, uh, physically. Physical, uh, physical spaces means referring to physical meetings yeah, between the advisors and the advisors. However, as we highlighted earlier as well, yeah, uh, virtual academic, yeah, virtual academic uh, activities, yeah, advisory activities, now, yeah, uh, is to be exercised by all the advisors, unless um, there's a situation where you can already start meeting your small number of students, then the provision requires the faculty. Yeah, to provide the certain spaces. Maybe you want to have a special room yeah, with, uh, I mean, nice ambience, uh, a comfortable, comfortable uh, suit uh, for the meetings to be carried out yeah, by the advisors. And those are the things that need to be taken care of by the faculty. Now, uh, Sarah, we also have this provision, yeah, I mean, under rule. We, ha we have this rule under Rule 30 saying that the dean shall allocate certain financial provisions from the management fund to carry out the advisory activities. Even the support given yeah, uh, by the university requires the dean of every faculty to allocate certain financial provision yeah, from the management fund yeah, to ensure that the advisory activities are carried out smoothly by all the uh, advisors. And uh, how uh, how further yeah we are going to uh, how how further we want to implement this uh, whole activities of uh, advisory? Now we should have the planned activity schedule. This is also mentioned in the rules, rule thirty one, saying that the dean shall prepare activities plan schedule every semester. I'm pretty sure we have to be sitting together yeah to plan. Of course, the dean will have to look at 
the views, uh, the plannings yeah, by the lecturers as well because the dean is the one being responsible to prepare the activities plan schedule every semester and ensure that the schedule is submitted online to the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic and International so that the management will know what is going on yeah, throughout the advisory activities for that semester. I guess uh, this would be one of the KPI of the dean and KPI of all lecturers as well. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let us look at this appointment. Yeah, appointment of the academic advisors means there's an official appointment. Yeah, and uh, this uh, this appointment means all teachers, all teachers uh, shall be appointed as academic advisors to a group of students in the faculty. That's how we are. We were being assigned. Yeah, we were assigned with certain numbers of students. Yeah, uh, in, in the faculty for us to take charge of them. And uh, to go further, yeah, don't be surprised that the powers and responsibilities of the academic advisors are also stipulated yeah, uh, inside the rules. Uh, therefore, uh, those are things those, those are the things that we have to comply with. Uh, we have to take note that we have these certain duties and responsibilities that we have to carry out. Yeah, I'm referring to the rules now. The first one, uh, to monitor the progress uh, of performance of the students online uh, and advise accordingly. Therefore, the key word there is monitoring and advising. Uh, means, uh, is the student uh, obligated to find you or you are the one who's obligated to find them? Or it takes two, yeah? It takes two to uh, realize yeah, the purpose of the academic advising. And... Uh, Next one, yeah. If we look at the powers, uh, our powers and responsibilities, the key word is advising. Uh, definitely, advising is the the big word to me. Advising means you have to advise from all angles, from all angles, yeah. Uh, not about choosing which one you want, which one we like, which one we just uh, we do not like. Therefore, advising the students uh, relating to the registration of course of studies and other related matters. That's the bigger part of it. Registration of course of studies, we may have a handbook for us to refer to, but other related matters would be, yeah, academic, but what if the students having, I mean, facing non-academic matters, but affecting yeah, the registration of courses, then that would be part of the uh, issues here yeah, relating to academic as well. And uh, of course, endorse, yeah? endorse course registration. I'm very sure you know what your duties are. Every semester, we will have to take note in the SMP system that we have to yeah, somehow open the system for the students to be able to register their courses for that particular semester. And uh, next one would be, again, the, the keyword is advice. Give advice to overcome students' academic problems. Now you can see the word problems. Problems there means there can be so much problems, uh, even as I've mentioned earlier, until it affects the emotional distress yeah, of a certain individual. So are you willing to yeah, take charge or be responsible or be together with the students to understand yeah, his or her problem? And this particular problem, so we can understand the general word is already problems. Therefore, it can be all sorts of all sorts of problems. And uh, under the rule uh, as well, yeah, under the rule as well, we can see this keyword assist, assisting students, assisting students in resolving problems other than non-academic. The keyword resolving, yeah, that's how I'm saying. Are we <clears throat> are we going to be the problem solver for our students? Are we? Can we, are we capable of doing that? Yeah, because uh, assist, uh, of course, assisting yeah, in uh, resolving problems, you have to be the guide, uh, you have to guide them, yeah, <clears throat> uh, for them to be able to resolve their problems. And if necessary to refer to the problem, uh, refer the problem to the relevant parties. This is where the counselor, the counselor of the university will come into position. Uh, however, we have to really understand the, the different role of an advisor 
and also a counselor. What does an advisor, uh, what should an, an advisor do and what the counselor's uh, roles yeah, in the whole, uh, in the university to handle students being referred to, yeah, to the counseling office, for example. Yeah, um, <clears throat> relevant parties may also include, I, I just give an example, the counselor office. Yeah, uh, maybe also to other experts that we need. Yeah, maybe in terms of the study, yeah, we need professional advisor. Then the professional advisor will come in to play the role, uh, able to advise uh, any any issues on a professional area of their studies, for example, because some uh, courses need yeah. Uh, professional views yeah from the outsiders from the public for example and um, this is also another big thing a uh, big uh, big uh, big what we call a big thing for us to do uh, big plan yeah because we need to supervise group project and this involve involves development and extension development and extension here uh, very generic it can be anything that uh, relates back yeah, to the group project. I can say that, for example, if the students, yeah, we encourage them to join, uh, uh, to join any association yeah, uh, in, the, in the university, uh, for example, ISAC, uh, and uh, in the faculty itself, we have, yeah, we have uh, persatuan, we have yeah, uh, associations where uh, students can join. And if that uh, activities yeah, relates yeah, to the courses that they take yeah, in their program, then that, of course, will be part of the development and extension activity uh, during the uh, supervising of the group project. Okay, long one, eh, Dr. Sarah. <laughs> it's quite long. We have lots of time. <laughs> and, okay, quite long. And uh, what about this? Eh? What about this? This is another, our, another duties of us it goes long list, yeah. Uh, keyword is planning, implementing, monitoring activities. Therefore, we have to have schedules. I believe that it has to be very organized. We have to be an organized person ourselves in order for us to be able to, yeah, uh, also plan with them, implement, and also monitor those activities uh, involving all of our students under our advisory. Therefore, time allocation and meeting them regularly definitely is a must for our yeah, academic advising activity. And yeah, some more here. Uh, the keyword, the keyword again, advice. So many times, yeah, advice uh, appear in these rules. Advise students to register courses based on program of studies curriculum enrolled by the students. This is basically on programs, yeah, uh, programs of studies curriculum uh, that need to be, I mean, that need to be carefully, carefully done, yeah, so that the students can uh, can graduate uh, on time, yeah. Um, they should be taking what courses the academic advisors must know, uh, whatever hours of credit that they have to take in order for them to graduate, and so that they won't delay their graduation. Yeah, there are there were cases yeah that we face um, we discovered that the students uh, had not enough credits to graduate but they are already in final year so what's how's how's the problem occurred uh, did we miss anything uh, and the students themselves are they not uh, vigilant about what they should be doing uh, these are all the things that we need to tell the students be responsible be responsible for your own matters. Yeah, don't get into trouble in future or in you know uh, uh, years to come, especially when it involves graduation. Yeah, and as we can see here, as I've already mentioned, also the obligation, yeah, regardless of all the I mean, duties of the advisors above, yeah, the obligation of registration, dropping, exemption of courses of studies is placed on the student. And this is uh, this is mentioned in in the room, yeah. Okay, Dr. Sarah, I guess uh, enough of uh, having to <laughs> uh, elaborate on that. Yes, but as you see, the keywords there: advice, uh, plan, monitor, implement, yeah, 
I guess those, those are all big words yeah, that we need to carry out as academic advisors. It's not, small, it's not uh, I mean, simple duties. Yeah? It involves you yourself must be, you know, uh, 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 I mean, ready yourself yeah, to carry out all these responsibilities. Mentally, physically fit. Okay. <laughs> okay, Thank you, Prof. Professor. Right. That, yeah, yeah, that's what the rules uh, all about. Yeah. If you want to know more, you want to refer to these, uh, I mean, uh, rules, yeah, it is in part D of the academic rules for undergraduates, yeah. When I listen to your talk, Prof, it's like so many responsibilities, so many <laughs> things that we need to advise our advisory. Uh, and I soon see that there's a financial aid available for the academician to conduct this pro program yeah. more efficiently quite interesting something that we need to explore and then there's also that dean should be accountable to report uh, for the report to be prepared that's mean we need to be to have the report to give to the dean for the dean to give to the vice chancellor uh, that's the dean's duties to submit the planning for the semester to the uh, deputy vice chancellor the nca uh, but uh, you see, yeah, the head of advisors also there. Yeah, the head, there will be one head uh, of advisors, yeah, being uh, to be appointed by the dean. Uh, as I've highlighted earlier, right? Uh, how do we cope with the burdensome, stressful, uh, burdensome, stressful issues? Eh? That one. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Sarah. Again? You said that we have to have a head of advisor. Yeah, yeah. So something that we should have, something that we haven't have, right? Any head of advisor? Uh, we, we should have. We, we, we have to have this head of uh, advisor uh, appointed by the dean yeah, to head. And as I said, to coordinate, at least we also have our own team of uh, advisors. Uh, we, in the schedule of the school, yeah, in the sc schedule of the academic advising activities of the school, we can allocate certain time yeah, for us to be together to discuss and minute any problems faced by the students generally and specifically. And that's how this academic advising can be active yeah, and, you know, and to be seen as very important because it goes back to the recipient who are the students because they are the one who's going to receive your good advice your brilliant advice, your brilliant suggestion, yeah, and they are away from their parents. And maybe some students, they are not close to their parents. They only have their peer groups to refer to. And if we are not showing our presence as academic advisors who can help them beyond the academic matters, I guess we are not fulfilling the above duties, right, inside the rules that you've seen just now. <laughs> okay, Dr. Sarah. That's about the head, yeah? That's about the head of advisor. <laughs> okay, Prof. Okay, Prof. Uh, my last question. What should we do to make us a good academic advisor? Are there any required skills that we should possess, we should have? Uh, this may need long answer to it, huh, Dr. Sarah. <laughs> However, yeah, before I forget, yeah, uh, these guidelines, yeah, these guidelines uh, also mention where as you said what skill what skill must we have yeah before before we are going to explore on the skills yeah there should be guidelines provided by the school for example one of the content of the guidelines should be on the empowerment or on the betterment of the advisors themselves correct we we also have to go for a training ourselves to handle our emotion perhaps to explore on psychological knowledge. How do we handle psychology of different students with different kinds of problems? Yeah? Therefore, these guidelines can be anything pertaining yeah, to the academic advising activities that can help uh, even the uh, lecturers. Yeah? And uh, therefore, this guideline yeah, uh, will be distributed to the academic advisor. This is for our reference. Uh, that's how the guidelines are signed by the dean to show the dean's commitment yeah, to take far. These academic advising activities is not something which is 
uh, simple but it needs responsibility and yeah, uh, feel uh, responsible, uh, feel obligated yeah, to ensure that our students are not having problem. And therefore, if we look at this, yeah, we have to tell the students that your obligations are there. You have to meet your advisor at least twice per semester. And the academic advisor will submit the report, as you said, uh, to the head of yeah, uh, academic advisor. And uh, this is twice per year is just, I guess, minimum. If you are active enough, you should be able to handle more than uh, twice, yeah? <laughs> twice or, you know, few times of meetings, yeah? And now virtual academic advising should be used, fully utilized, yeah? Uh, the pandemic issues, the flood issues, where are we? Are we texting them? Are we using the fastest communication like WhatsApp or our phone? Uh, phone, of course, uh, the handphone is the quickest means of communications between us yeah, and our uh, advisees. Yeah? yeah, coming back to the skill. Uh, this is basically skill of advisors. Definitely, we have to acquire whatever skills that we want. Uh, for ourselves before we can be able, I mean, before we are able to advise others, right? Now, uh, mentioning on skills yeah, uh, of advisors, we actually need to be knowledgeable. These are some which I've, uh, you know, noted. Uh, and we ourselves, yeah, should be yeah, in this, yeah, uh, having these skills. Maybe basic skill, more than this would be more things that we need to uh, acquire. Now, knowledgeable. Yeah, of course, knowledgeable ourselves. The content, yeah, the content is correct, clear, yeah, uh, not ambiguous. Uh, we must be organized. Uh, we have to be encouraging, yeah, always able to encourage, yeah, uh, our advisees. Care, care about our advisees. Show interest and helpful intent. Show that we are very helpful. We're willing to help them. Next, uh, be a good listener. I'm not sure. Not all people can be a good listener, right, Dr. Sarah? I don't think so. But you have to be. You have to be someone who can listen yeah, to your advices, at least for them. Uh, be a good listener. Uh, remember their personal details, even their nicknames. Yeah, If they have nicknames, you should be able to call them by their nicknames so it feels closer. Yeah, And uh, willing to share advice. Yeah. Now, if I may share yeah, uh, some studies yeah, done on the students' attitudes uh, towards academic advising uh, should be interesting. Uh, let me share some. Some positive findings reveal that the advisees felt that their academic advisor displayed positive attitude towards their problems and has a good perspective of what they are all about. Uh, they feel that the advisor was enjoying his academic advising duties met his advisees on a frequent basis and possessed good grasp of the problems faced by the advisees. Uh, in, relation to, in relation to academic matters, uh, their advisors were aware of the details mentioned in the academic handbook, uh, yeah, well-versed yeah, with the curriculum, communicated, communicated clearly on any ambiguous matter uh, with the advisees, and able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the advisees. Uh, the advisor also conducted surveys uh, himself to assess the advising effectiveness and was aware of the current changes and policies of the university. Yeah. Uh, in addition, the advisor replied to their emails quickly and frequently updated his website and posted messages on academic advising as well and encouraged uh, as well as encourage the advisees to use technology yeah, to the fullest. However, however, what if the advisor cannot be contacted and avoided meetings with advisees? In which category are we? In the first category or in the second category where we always gone missing? Yeah, uh, these were also findings. Yeah, uh, There were also findings uh, that reveal Advisors neither make regular contact with their advisors, nor are the advisors themselves willing to devote their time and experience for their advisors' betterment. And most lecturers do not have the essential skills. Uh, this is what you're, you're, you're asking just now, right? 
the lecturers do not have themselves the essential skills in academic advising and uh, nor do they know how to help students exploit, exploit available resources to achieve results. And this wide gap between advisors and advisees poor motivation on part of the uh, advisees seeking advising services, plus advisees lack of confidence and inability to approach positively to their advisors, especially when they see our name with a professor, some title with Datuk title, Tan Sri title, yeah? With all those titles, are they, do, you, do they think they can approach us positively? Is there any protocol to uh, reach any advisors with high rank, yeah, coming from the high rank? And uh, the unwillingness of advisors to offer advice services and insufficient incentives given for advisors were the commonest challenges identified. And let us remind ourselves, academic advisors give impact to students' lives. Yeah, that's, we need to de develop programs based on the student learning outcomes, focus on the student learning outcomes and determine uh, ways to measure and improve results. In order to do this, we must keep current on the best practices for educating and to shape dynamic programs for them. That much I can respond, it is a long one, yeah, but uh, we can evaluate ourselves. We are in the first group of advisors or we are in the second group of advisors, yeah? That's, I think, crucial we also. Middle, we could be in the middle group, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Are you in the middle group? By the way, you should check yourself. We, we can evaluate our own self, yeah? <laughs> Definitely. Okay. And... Um, okay, it's very interesting. Yeah, if we think it's interesting, like, like I said, if you have the feel of uh, wanting to become an advisor, coaching, yeah, coaching uh, uh, people, uh, we, may, we are actually exercising our skill with our uh, students. Yeah? We, we are actually exercising our skills. Yeah? And... Uh, Maybe for future, yeah. Uh, if we were to explore, yeah, the greatest challenges that we might have experienced throughout the years of advising, yeah, we, we can conduct uh, surveys, yeah. One of the ways to obtain information, yeah, on the challenges and recommend for improvement. Maybe Kate will conduct this later. Uh, conduct surveys among the advisors and the advisees uh, to identify, uh, for example, input like a uh, numbers of students under our advisory manageable. Uh, advisor's ability to follow up with the students. Are we willing to do that? Will, will Kate, uh, Center for Academic Development, willing to organize a training? Yeah, skill training, yeah, Sarah? Would you want to go if they uh, uh, offer any seats for that? <laughs> go for training, yes, yeah, skill training. Yeah, because we are also building up our skill of able to, uh, you know, advise, yeah? Not only students, we can use it for our children, for our, yeah, uh, friends, colleagues. Uh, next, uh, are we capable of playing the role of a counsellor to the students without sending them to the, for example, university's counsellor or other offices for special needs? We, we can go beyond, we can go beyond uh, the basic skill, for example, because you are well versed in the issues that, uh, face, that are faced by the students. Um, what are the best ways for, of assessing the advices? As I said, maybe uh, phone, yeah? handphone is the fastest way. But uh, yeah, uh, any platform that you feel yeah, would be the best uh, way of assessing. Of course, we need quick access. And uh, if face-to-face -face meet up with the students, uh, 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 what you like or what you like uh, uh, more, then we can arrange that. We can arrange that. I think that's also the best. We can sit together, have tea, you know, biscuits. Uh, we we get the finance uh, financial assistance right from the dean. <laughs> Therefore, we can use the allocation, yeah, to even do uh, to even uh, to even organize a uh, a day with advisors, yeah, a day with advisors, and we can also conduct team advisory system, yeah, a few of us, yeah, uh, team up together so that we feel that 
uh, we are in a, a big team and more fun yeah when there are more numbers of people yeah, uh, get together in a team yeah you think so now uh, how often do we review the advisory system that is the best part do we see any documentation reviewing the advisory system how do we improve from years uh, from previous years and years to come and how does the faculty support the academic advising system in terms of technology financial uh, manpower assistance yeah from the various studies carried out on effective academic advising it can be said that the main challenges yeah uh, identified would be oops sorry <laughs> something pop up on my screen um, the main challenges would be university curriculum uh, classroom management and the academic advising delivery systems yeah we have we have the system the rules also mentioned about the system but how do we improve the delivery system to make it effective being felt yeah by the advisees they feel they feel our presence and it is about the academic advising system in the technological educational environment. I think that would sum up uh, the whole challenges. Yeah, I hope uh, I, uh, you know, I am meeting uh, the expectation of the viewers here. Plus, please be aware that the rules are available. It is in the rules. Yeah, uh, the best is for us to comply and make sure the rules are uh, followed. Yeah, closely. That's all, Dr. Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Lots of things that I have learned today, especially that we need to contact <laughs> our students consequently more often. Something that uh, I think I need to do after this. <laughs> ah, yeah. After okay. this session, immediately go and search, search yes. and rescue your students. <laughs> I should ask them how are they doing during the during the because of our. Uh, rainy position now how are they doing right yeah of okay. course we, our school itself we have 50 students affected yeah. uh -huh. hmm. is, yeah. is it one of our if my student i should know that <laughs> sure sure i have i do have to under my advisory system mm -hmm. so uh before we end our session today is there any question from the viewers do the view have any question um, Any question? Uh, I can also see some comment from the chat box. Interesting too. Poor attitude students are burdensome, Dr. Sairam. <laughs> That's what the view of our viewer. Yeah, uh, tend to agree, tend to agree. Uh, but we have to keep, uh, yeah, some lecturers feel that they are big enough. They should know what, they, what their responsibilities are. But uh, as I said, the rapport... If that is not there, it might also affect the relationship. But I tend to agree that some poor attitude students, but if we can carry, we can pull these uh, students yeah, to be close with us, uh, yeah, I think something can be done. But no time and poorly prepared supervisors are yeah, also be burdensome. Yes, uh, Chiu. Ah. We are looking at the comments, Dr. Sarah. I love to look at the comments yes. too. Most of this um, lecture also find is quite a heavy duty. Ah, see? Uh, means Bro. that's something, yeah, something real, yeah? Normally, it's just in the lecturer's office. Yeah, maybe uh, our viewer is responding to the space that uh, we are talking about just now, right? The faculty can create one conducive place. Uh -huh. Uh, like, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, but we do have in our school, the uh, cafe, yeah? we have last time the cafe side, uh, the uh, well, con concourse part where we can sit there, you know, and can spend a uh, few ringgit uh, calling our students and then we can uh, blanja them tea, okay, uh, roti canai, whatever, and start to create the rapport with them. That should, uh, can be done, uh, I guess, yeah. And... Uh, Nur Zalinda, she's saying that we have 10 to 12 students under one advisor. Try to apply the sharing, inshallah. Yes, good job, Nur Zalinda. You can uh, take whatever effort yeah, that comfortable to you as well. And then you feel pleasant yeah, about uh, doing it. Um, this 
Time is saying 22 advisors under me only can manage to handle those that approach actively and reply to messages in the advisory group chat. Exactly. If those are active students, we have no problem because the energy yeah, coming from them and we will respond. And of course, if the students found us first, then we have to be a responsible advisor being able to respond immediately yeah, to their requests. Yeah, you are most welcome, uh, Zalinda. I think that's all in the chat box, eh, Dr. Sairam. I guess we are we are done. Thank you to yes. Centre for Academic uh, Development here yeah, for this initiative. I guess there's so much uh, avenue for this academic advising system to go further, to be more present uh, and feel felt by the advisors as well as the advisors, and how to overcome the burdensome, the stressful we have to find ways in order to make it enjoyable, like the finding of one, uh, some findings of the uh, attitude of the students when they find the academic advisor enjoying their academic yeah, uh, portfolio, uh, academic advising, uh, advising portfolio. I guess that's great. Yeah, We want to be in that group. We do not want to be in the MIA group, missing in action group. <laughs> With that, I hope whatever we are sharing today yeah, will be benefit for the viewers. Okay, I pass it to Dr. Sarah. Thank you so much. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Prof. From our discussion, Welcome. at least now, I acknowledge that as an academic advisor, I am not only responsible in guiding my students during the course election and their academic goals towards their future careers, but I also need to raise my interest on other issues that might affect their education performance. So I learned that we need to build a strong desire to assist our advisees so that they can be more organized in achieving their desired goal. So to be an effective advisor, we need to use all the will powers to help and support our supervisees. So we need to be trust, uh, be receptive and approachable to encourage our supervisors to talk to us when they face any issues. Really, I'm really thank you for all the advice, Prof. So thank no you so problem. much, Prof. Dr. Rosanna, for this very interesting and informative sharing. It's a really great honor for us having you on for our event today. I really enjoy our session, and there's a lot of new information that I learned and acknowledged today. I believe that we need to always remind our advisees: when things get tough, you may feel that you are on your own, but always remember that being your supervisor. By being your advisor, we are always here for you and you are not alone. Anytime you need us, we'll be with you always, inshallah. So hopefully sharing uh, will be beneficial to all our audience. I'll end our big our talk with a big thank you to all our viewers and participants for their questions and attentions. Uh, I end with Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Jumpa lagi. Terima kasih. Salam. Thanks, Saira. Thanks, Kak. Saya nak belajar nak. Ia pun nak kena belajar ni. Okay, ini ber. Because this program is still online. Yeah, it's still live. Yeah, online. Like, you can leave. Bye.